Hi everyone, my name is Betty and in today's video, I am going into your bedroom. I will talk about what you should know, what you should avoid, and how you can best arrange your bedroom. I will cover everything from the color of your duvet to how many pillows you should have. Just kidding, that stuff doesn't matter. What I will actually cover is the best position for your bed, the type of bed you should consider, a few bedroom design implications, and if you stay until the end, I have a bonus about classical feng shui and how that plays a role in your bedroom. The bedroom is a sacred space. You spend a lot of time here, so it is crucial that you align the energy to support you. Depending on the size of your room and the layout of your space, you might have limited options as to where you can position your bed. In general, the bedroom should be more yin than the rest of your home. Yin means quiet, dark, less commotion, versus yang, which means more active, loud, and bright. The ideal bed, strictly from a form school of feng shui, is to have a stable bed against a solid wall with a tall headboard and clear overhead space. This signifies support for your headspace and a good night's rest. Therefore, the command position is generally the most favorable option from the form school perspective because it allows you to have a full view of whomever is coming through the door. And it is generally the easiest position to satisfy all four criteria. However, the size of the room, the location of the bedroom door, windows, closets, and a variety of other structures add complications to this general rule. So let's consider each criteria with some examples. A recent trend promotes a futuristic look with your bed floating in midair. The illusion of your bed floating is fine so long as it is not actually floating because this design does not satisfy the sturdy bed criteria. If you have a large space, you might be tempted to have your bed float in the middle of the room. This may seem cool or trendy, but it is definitely not feng shui approved because with this position, you do not have enough support for your headspace. If you have a small bedroom, then your options may be limited. Option A in this example is not ideal because your head is in direct alignment with the door frame. The energy that comes through the hallway will be too aggressive while you rest. Just a note here, the same rules for the front door applies to the doors inside the house as well. So make sure you check out my front door feng shui video if you want to learn more. Now back to this example. In this case, option B is preferred because it only exposes your feet and allows your head to rest in a more yin area. Now, some of you might ask, what if your bed is facing an internal door, like an ensuite bathroom? Well, the rule of thumb still remains. Avoid facing a door as much as possible, with the exception of a closet door. The negative energy from the bathroom plus any moisture or dampness can have an unhealthy effect on you over time. In particular, the person who is directly next to or in front of the bathroom will feel the brunt of the impact. This next layout has the foot of your bed facing the door. You might think this is okay since your feet will be closest to the door based on the previous example, but not so fast. This position is so bad that it has its own name. This is known as the coffin position. Typically, you see this arrangement before the coffin is carried out the door. So it is an extremely inauspicious position. If possible, move your bed away from the doorframe or turn your bed sideways. If your only option is to put your bed under the window, you might have heard that sleeping under the window is bad. So let's break down why that is. Remember the criteria of a good bed position. A stable bed, solid wall, tall headboard, and clear overhead space. Having your bed against the window violates the solid wall rule. The underlying connotation is that you could be sleeping with your window open, leaving your head exposed every night. This is especially relevant if you have a spindle bed. The remedy to this is to ensure that you have a solid headboard and heavy blackout curtains that you can close while you sleep at night. That way you can create the illusion of a solid wall behind you and an added layer to prevent any air from slipping through. So sleeping under the window is not a bad thing as long as you know how to remedy the negative effects. If you live in tight quarters, then you might have figured out some creative ways to leverage your bed for some extra space. But are they feng shui approved? Let's take a look at some examples. Murphy beds are great space savers for multifunction rooms, but because you can open and collapse the bed within minutes, it is not considered a stable bed. 
and it does not have a clear overhead space due to the bed frame. If you have to sleep on a Murphy bed while visiting friends for a few nights, then it is not a big deal. But definitely avoid having it as your primary bed where you will have it for months and years ahead. Storage beds are another great space saver. However, similar to Murphy bed, you should avoid this style where you can lift the bed entirely. The style with built-in drawers on the bottom is a much better alternative. Also, avoid built-in units with storage above the bed as it can create undue pressure. Bunk beds are popular for small spaces, particularly for young children. It is fun, whimsical, and a great space saver. But bunk beds are not just made for tiny humans. Adults use them as well, and not all bunk beds are made equal in the eyes of feng shui. Generally speaking, bunk beds are not favored in feng shui because it violates several feng shui principles. Oppressive ceiling due to undue pressure and no solid headboard. Let's look at some examples. The most common style is with two twin beds stacked on top of one another. This style automatically creates a more condensed airflow for the bottom bunk. And depending on the proximity to the ceiling, the top bunk may also feel this oppressed energy as well. On top of that, spindle bunk beds are by far the most popular style with a metal or wooden bar as headboard, therefore lacking the necessary support for your head. The ideal scenario and arrangement is when both beds are equal distance in a high ceiling space with a wall behind as headboard. Another style to avoid is the triple bunk bed, where one bed is placed horizontally on top of two bottom beds. In this case, the horizontal bed creates added pressure to the head space of the bottom beds. Or it can be a single bed on top of a queen size bed. In this case, the impact is only on one person or one side. Similar to Murphy beds, bunk beds are not ideal for long-term use, especially for adults. Children are less affected by the oppressed ceiling due to their smaller stature. However, the pressure created by a triple bunk bed will still remain. Speaking of pressure, here are a few ceiling styles and wall designs that you might want to reconsider before building it into your space. Similar to the triple bunk bed example, an overhead beam can create added pressure in the head area. Long-term exposure can manifest in stress and pressure, whether that is external or self-imposed. Tray or beam ceilings can create a dramatic effect for the room, but more importantly, it can also create the same effect as an overhead beam. If possible, you want to have a thick headboard to help you avoid the beam from being directly above your head or any part of your body. To minimize the effect, you can use fabric to create a canopy to minimize the impact. Floating shelves are another great way to utilize limited real estate in the bedroom. However, when it is directly above the bed, it can inadvertently create undue pressure similar to the overhead beam. So make sure you keep the shelving light and narrow and avoid heavy planters and books that can weigh down on you. Ceiling fans, air conditioning units, or a light fixture above the bed are other common scenarios. Even though they might be sturdy and locked in place, the invisible pressure still exists. Cathedral or shed ceiling in an attic is another example to avoid placing your bed under. As chi travels along the wall, when it hits an obstacle, it will redirect down towards your body. So in an attic space, when the ceiling is lower than usual, the oppressed ceiling increases the frequency with which you are hit with excess energy. If you have no other choice but to use the attic space, then try to position your bed under the highest peak of the ceiling. This rule is more severe to low ceiling spaces. If you have a high ceiling space, then this is not a big concern. Now that you've stayed until the end, let's talk about classical feng shui. Everything I covered until now are all part of the form school of feng shui, which covers everything you can see and touch. These rules are easy to relate to and identify in your own space, but they are often hard to remedy without a renovation. In classical feng shui, it is slightly different because everything is based on the direction in which the auspicious or inauspicious energy resides. What I mean by this is that each space has its own unique good and bad direction that dictates the energy that promotes health, relationship, and wealth. So even though placing your bed under the window might not be the best bed position from a form school perspective, there is a chance that you might be facing a good direction from the classical feng shui perspective, in which case, Classical feng shui helps to redeem the negative implications. For example, the energy in the West is extremely inauspicious for 2022. What that means is that if your bedroom is in the West sector of your house, 
or if your bed is facing the west, then you are likely to encounter more obstacles this year than usual. If possible, move to a different room or move your bed to face a different direction. Ultimately, tapping into the unique energetic blueprint of your space creates more significant result than purely relying on the structural layout of your space. This is why classical feng shui is uniquely powerful in creating impactful changes in your life. I hope you enjoyed this video and find it helpful for your bedroom design. Leave a comment below if you have any questions.